It wasn't started purposely as a zoo. You know, there wasn't an intent to say, hey, let's build a zoo here. There was a bear that needed a home. <laughs> uh, zoos all around the country started in somewhat familiar ways uh, for our story. And here we are 125 years later, you know, as one of the leading institutions in the world. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun story, but the, the mayor at the time, they were gifted a black bear, and, and that bear that came here was named Billy Brand. And they put it here in City Park. So they built a cage to house this black bear, uh, and it became a place where people would come to City Park, which we're obviously right in the middle of here, and they would come and view this bear. And that is sort of the impetus for the zoo being where it's at and where the zoo started here. You know, when we, when we started in 1896 with Billy Bryan, and at that point it wasn't even really thought of as a zoo, and so they weren't really keeping records. They had somebody who took care of this bear. Uh, so we don't have a ton of information beyond some pictures, so we don't know how long he lived, you know, how long he was here at the zoo. Whereas today we've got a ton of records. I can tell you the, I can tell you the last time, you know, uh, the pulse was checked on an animal. Uh, from there, it, it built to, to have a broader collection of animals. There were some, these big pens that had a lot of different um, waterfowl, that sort of thing, and expanding. And eventually was designated as a zoo. And it was free at the time. People would just come into City Park and you could kind of wander around and see these cages and such. And it's a very small collection. When Bear Mountain was conceptualized, one of the interesting pieces is that they decided to, to think about making it look naturalistic so that you were, to that sense of place, you were seeing an animal in more of a habitat that it would, that it would naturally be found in. We were the first zoo in North America to, to take this and say, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, design a place that looks like a place versus just a cage. So when, when they were devising this habitat, it was 1918 when it opened. The construction workers actually went outside of uh, Morrison near Dinosaur Ridge there and they actually took imp imprints, these plaster imprints of actual rocks in order to, to make the rock work that you see here. Um, and so it's, it's truly a native habitat because it's actually a replication of something that's found here in Colorado. <laughs> So the, the original Bear Mountain is still here. Um, it looks very much the same as it did when they first built it, except that you don't see cars driving up to it <laughs> in the middle of the park uh, as you did back then. The, uh, but it's evolved over time. While at the time that was state-of-the-art for bears, it's not state-of-the-art for bears today. And so we recently, a couple years ago, opened Harmony Hill, and that was creating a much better space for our brown bear who still resided at, at Bear Mountain. I it's a historic structure, so it's going to remain. It's on the historical register, um, and it's a it's a very cool history of, of the zoo, and I think it, it tells it, it tells a great story about where we've been and, and and where we are today. The early days of zoos were picture frames of animals, if you will, and you would go from animal to animal to animal, and you would see them in their habitats loosely used at that time. They were pretty much um, small. Uh, concrete and, and caging uh, environments and at that time that's what people were comfortable with they felt safe with they you know kept that beast that wild beast away uh, as time has gone on people expected more and as we learn more about the animals the animals needs what they required to to live and the mental enrichment became a bigger part of what happened in addition to that we also knew that the world wasn't getting any better uh, as it relates to wildlife. Uh, in the 70s, when the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act and all of these things, Marine Mammal Protection Act, happened, it was to say, whoa, <laughs> the world is not good right now. So zoos were one of the first organizations that really stepped up and said, what can we do to help educate our communities? And so from the 70s to now, that's been evolving. We'll do work in our own zoos and places to we'll do work globally. We've had 600 plus projects all across the world. And one of the first zoos to, to really embed in field conservation in the way that we did. 
you know, there's a lot of things where we were one of the first or the first to do things that, that really help improve care. So we were one of the first zoos that we had an animal behaviorist. We were one of the first that had a nutritionist. Um, but even before that, you know, we were building, you know, much bigger spaces and much more natural spaces. So I think that there's this thread of improvement throughout that time that um, continues right through today. So the accreditation process is, is an interesting one. I think uh, kind of a seal of approval or a sign of good practices. It's a rigorous process. You go through it every five years to make sure that we're doing the best that we can for the animals, for our staff, and for the public. Keeping all of them safe um, and keeping them all enriched in, in whatever way that, that makes the most sense. So that process, um, Denver Zoo has been going through for a long time now. That really for people to care about wildlife and to make changes in their own behaviors to support saving wildlife you have to have a connection and that connection happens out here for many people. I'm a, I'm a perfect example where there was no way my, my mom could afford to take us to Africa but I would come here as a, as a child and that's how I got to experience it and we've learned that that's, that's a powerful piece that we have um, that we can help save wildlife uh, and that helps us you know with two million people coming through here that's, that's a real impact that we can have. We have over 80 buildings on this campus. Um, we try to hide the buildings as much as we can and elevate the animals because they're really the, the, the stars of the show, if you will. They're the, they're the ones that connect people. You know, it started with a black bear is what we always like to say. We went from one animal back in 1896 to we've got about 3,000 individuals living here at the zoo. Uh, that's about, about 600 species. Well, it's a 125-year-old zoo. I want to be able to say 20 years from today, 50 years from today, that we took care of it. Uh, we really want to uh, make sure that people in our community understand that this is their zoo. We're just the stewards of it right now. 